Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video I'm going to be talking about three techniques that I use to improve my wildlife photography. But before that I just want to clarify that I'm not doing anything irresponsible right now. Um, I've just come out for my one time exercise a day. I've literally walked from my house across the field and to the lakes um, and you may be able to hear the road in the background as well so sorry about that. So if you haven't seen my video that I released a couple of days ago on how to photograph wildlife from your home, um, then you might want to go check that out because a lot of what I'm going to be talking about in today's video is going to relate to the uh, process I went through to get the, the photographs of the uh, hoverfly in my back garden the other day. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, I'll put the link up, um, up in the top right hand corner of the screen, which is probably here, um, and you can go check that out. Now tip number one is to do your research. Uh, there are two different types of research that I like to do. Um, the first one is probably one that I use less commonly, um, but this is to actually do research beforehand um, online or through reading books and journals, things like that. So for example, if you're making a film on, um, on anything really, a wildlife documentary, or you're going to a photography hide specifically to photograph a certain species. Um, in this case, I would recommend doing your research before going to the hide. You know, you probably paid for the experience, so you might as well look up um, certain behaviours for that animal. This is then going to give you the best opportunities to get uh, the best photographs because you're going to know what the species is going to do and when. So the second type of research is just to go out and see what you can find. Uh, now this is what I did previously in the video that I released a few days ago. I went out into my back garden and I saw what kind of wildlife I could find um, and what opportunities presented themselves to me. And this, to be honest, is probably what we all do anyway. It's a lot quicker and more effective if you're just going out, you've got one day off and you want to go out and photograph wild, wildlife. Um, the main difference really here is when you get to step two. So step two is all about observing the wildlife. So instead of going out and photographing everything you see in every single animal you come across, find one subject that you want to spend maybe half an hour to an hour photographing. Um, for example, I chose the hoverfly in my last video um, and I stood around watching it for a while um, before deciding to take any photos of it. So by doing this, I actually learned a little bit about the animal and where it likes to go and where it likes to spend its time. Um, so for example, when I first saw, spotted the hoverfly, uh, it was actually hovering um, above a green, green shrubbery, green bush. Um, after watching it for some time, I noticed that the hoverfly actually liked to land on the white flowers, which I still don't know what they are. But if you've seen the video, you'll know what I'm talking about. So they like to land on the white flowers and they were doing that significantly more um, than they were landing on any other type of flower in my garden. Um, so this sort of brings me on to step three of what I like to do. So step three is composition. After doing step one and step two, I now have identified a species I want to photograph and I've identified where I'm most likely going to be able to find the animal. Um, so let's say for example, I didn't do either of these steps. If I didn't do step one, I'd probably go out and photograph every single animal I, I, I see whilst I'm outside that's great you probably get a lot more photographs of a lot more animals which is good and if that's what you want to do then you should do that uh, if you if you want to increase the quality of your images um, it's it is ideal to take a little bit more time just photographing one species um, and this is something that you can easily do right now from your back garden if I didn't do step two then I probably would have taken a photograph of the hoverfly as soon as I found it um, which is fine However, it probably wouldn't have been as nice of a photo as what I ended up with um, after doing step one, two, and three. Um, I probably would have just taken a photograph of it. It would have been a flat photograph, no depth of field, um, and really just not much thought has gone into the photograph at all. Now, with step three being composition, this a lot of the time means you're gonna have to wait for the animal to come to you. Um, <laughs> again, this whole process is about being patient, learning a lot more about your animal uh, that you want to photograph, and just taking time to get those good quality images. 
So once you've completed step one and two, and you've finally got yourself to stage three, um, now's the time where you stop following the animal. You focus on where you know the animal is going to be. So play around with some, some compositions, um, line up your shot and, and frame it nicely so that you know that when, when the animal lands in that exact spot, you are gonna get the best possible photo you can get. Um, so as you can see, I am in this video just showing that I'm, I'm waiting around for the animal to, to come back. I've got my, my camera on my tripod, I've got it all set up, framed nicely, and I'm ready to go. All my settings are done, everything is ready, my focus points are there. Um, so I know that once the animal lands, where I'm waiting for it to land, all I have to do is press the shutter, uh, shutter button and I'm gonna get that shot. Now you might be thinking that this only relates to insects or animals that you can do with a macro lens. Um, but I can assure you that this really relates to any animal and anything you're photographing. Uh, maybe your research method might change, change and the time spent might change as well. But for example, in my previous video where I've built a um, reflection pool for birds, um, I'm essentially doing the exact same thing. So it, it, instead, in this case, I'm actually building a spot where I know I'm going to get the, the perfect photo. Um, but I still have to wait for the birds to show up before I'm going to get any good photos. And actually, it's been about three days now since I've built that reflection pool. And I've had two sightings of a robin land on it. <laughs> um, so, you know, it takes patience uh, is what I'm trying to say. And also it can relate to other animals as well as insects and um, macro. Yeah, and if you want to check out the video where I um, built my own reflection pool from home, um, I'll put the link up here and you can go check that one out as well. Um, I'm gonna also be, be bringing out an update video on the reflection pool in terms of what I've managed to actually capture and how that has gone for me. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing to my channel and I'll bring that out within the next couple of days. So they are my three tips to improve your wildlife photography. Um, these are the three that I find the most useful in terms of actually just thinking about what it is you're gonna be photographing. Um, it may sound really basic and simple to just be like research, observe, and composition. When, when I just throw that out there, it sounds, you know, well, well, that's obvious, you know, um, but it's the act of actually doing these things um, that will get you those improved photographs. So if you're in doubt, try it out. And aside from that, though, um, thank you very much for watching. This was just a quick one. Um, I'm heading home back to safety. I hope everyone that's watching is staying safe and is well. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. And until next time. I'll see you out there.